Hello, my name is Enrique Barriuso and I'm a consultant at Symmetry in the civil and infrastructure sector. In this video, I'll show you the top three new features in Civil 3D 2024. We'll look at Project Explorer, Corridor Transitions and Sub-Assemblies. Let's start with Project Explorer, which is now a core part of Civil 3D meaning that all Civil 3D customers can access it. You don't need to have an AEC collection license. And this is going to be the case for all versions where Project Explorer is supported, not just 2024. We have the Project Explorer dialog here. As usual, you can open it from the home tab of the ribbon there. You now have an alternative, which is to open it directly by selecting an object. So if I select this assembly here, for instance, in the right click menu, I have this open in Project Explorer option. I can pick that. And it's going to open that assembly in Project Explorer. So we can see this is the region that's using that particular assembly. And we can highlight it using control as, as we usually do in Project Explorer. An alternative to that is to do it from Prospector. So here I have an alignment. If I right click in Prospector, I have the same option open in Project Explorer. So if I pick that, it's going to again open Project Explorer and select that particular alignment. We now have an additional node with property sets. You can filter, you can show all property sets or only the property sets that are applied to objects. You can, you can see the different filters there. And here we can see that this suitability codes property set is applied to that corridor over there. Let's continue with Corridor Transitions. This was introduced in the 2023.2 update and it allows you to create a transition to any parameter of any sub-assembly, even if it doesn't support targets. And you can also control the transition type. You can make it linear, parabolic, or you can see the options there. So we have here a couple of transitions. You can open this dialog from the contextual tab of the corridor. And we can see those two transition sets. Let's uh, have a look at some improvements. Those are simply transitions on the on the width. You can see it will list all the parameters here. You can transition any of those. When you create a transition set, you now have uh, two options. You can pick the sub-assembly name or the class name. We have an example of each here. So if I look at the sub-assemblies, I can see that for the left-hand side, is picking the .NET class name, simple carriageway over there. And for the right hand side, I selected just the name of the sub-assembly, which you can customize. So that's one of the differences. Another additional feature that you have now is that you have the option to lock the transition set. So if I 
look at this padlock there's the option there if it's unlocked and i change that start station for instance which is that station there and i apply it's going to change just that station i'm going to change it back However, if it's locked, it's going to move the whole transition set. So if I type 300 here and I apply, notice that it moved the, the whole thing. So as a new option there, you can reorder the transition set. So now that I moved the widening to the other side they're not in in the right sequence so i can select it and use the arrow here to change the order i have an option if i right click to zoom to the transition set or i can pan to listen to the transition set And I also want to mention that corridor transitions are now included in the Civil 3D API. And we'll finish with the changes in subassembly deployment and management. We have a corridor here with an assembly applied, which is empty at the moment. I'm going to import a custom subassembly into pallets. What's new here is that you can now link directly to the PKT file. It used to create a copy in the program data folder that's no longer needed. You can directly link the PKT file in the folder. I'm picking a folder in my C drive. I could pick a network location or a folder in an ACC project using desktop connector, for instance. I'm going to apply the subassembly and I'll apply to the corridor. I'll rebuild it. We can see here the, the subassembly applied. We have now a subassembly node in Prospector where we can look at the subassembly. It will show you the path and it will show you the version and the status if it's okay if it's missing if it's out of date let's now make some changes to the pkt file in in subassembly composer so we made some changes. I'm going to override the PKT file in the same location. So this is where I import it from before. I'm going to override that file. If I refresh here, I get a warning in the corridor and I get a warning in the sub assembly. So if I look in the sub assembly, I can see that it's now out of date. We have made some changes. We increased the version to 2.0. This is something you can manually do in sub assembly composer. So we can see it's out of date because we have version one and we have a version two loaded now in that PKT file. If I right click, and update it has now changed to version 2 the status is back to ok and we can see the new sub assembly and if i rebuild the corridor we have a new line for that uh, extension that was added to 
to the channel. So notice that I did the whole process with Civil 3D open. You don't need to restart Civil 3D or re-import. Everything happens automatically. So if I now insert this one again, it's now version 2. It has updated that as well. Another thing that uh, I want to show you is what happens if I move the pkt file so i have it here in that folder what happens if i move it to a different folder i'll move it to this alternative location so it's no longer where it used to be if i refresh again i get a warning again in the corridor, in the channel, and it's telling me that it's not finding the file, file not found. I can fix the missing path, browse to the new location, and when I apply that, it's back to OK, so you can repath the location of the pkt file those were the top three new features in civil 3d 2024 project explorer becoming a core part of civil 3d the improvements in courier transitions and the ability to link a pkt file directly to a subassembly and make changes in subassembly composer without the need to close Civil 3D and re-import. I hope the video was useful. Thanks for watching.